Hi everyone. This video is going to be more practice problems <clears throat> related to exam number two. So in these questions, it says to select the answer that characterizes the following immediate inferences and adopt the Aristotelian standpoint for these problems. <clears throat> um, so first we need to determine whether it's converse, obverse, contrapositive, or one of the immediate inferences that we can make from the um, traditional square of op opposition, the contrary, subcontrary, subalternate, or contradictory relation. And then we need to think about whether or not it's a valid or invalid uh, inference and, and select the appropriate answer. Notice that one of the options is valid with no fallacy. All right, so no ballerinas are awkward dancers. Remember when a statement's presented that way, it's presented as if it's being true, as if it's true. But no ballerinas are awkward dancers, therefore it is false that all ballerinas are awkward dancers. No ballerinas are awkward dancers, therefore it is false that all ballerinas are awkward dancers. Okay, if the original statement no ballerinas or awkward dancers is given as true. And then the inference we're drawing is that it's false that all ballerinas are awkward dancers. Then if we look at our square of opposition, we're going from no ballerinas to all ballerinas. We're saying uh, E is a true statement, therefore the corresponding A statement is false. That is the contrary relation. So we need to look for uh, an answer that has contrary in it. Um, so there's one here, and then it could be valid too. So by the contrary relation, if you remember, if E is given as true, then the corresponding A statement is false. If A is given as true, the corresponding E statement would be false. Well, in this case, E is given as true, no ballerinas are awkward dancers. Therefore, it's false that all ballerinas are awkward dancers. Therefore, this is a valid uh, inference to make. There's no fallacy. And you're not asked to identify here, but <clears throat> the, um, that would be a valid inference made by the contrary relation between uh, an E, a true E, and a false uh, A statement. 26. <clears throat> It's false that some Gothic cathedrals are not rich legacies. Therefore, some Gothic cathedrals are rich legacies. It's false that some Gothic cathedrals are not rich legacies. Therefore, some Gothic cathedrals are rich legacies. So if we're saying it's false that some Gothic cathedrals are not rich legacies, if we think about our square of opposition, we have some S are not P. And it's saying it's given as false that some S are not P. Therefore, it's true that some Gothic cathedrals are rich legacies. So that is the corresponding I statement. So this is a subcontrary relation. What is the uh, relation of the subcontrary? Well, the relation of the subcontrary is that if O is given as false, then I must be true. If I is given as false, then O must be true. It's the opposite relation of A and E, the one that we just did. So in our, in, uh, our uh, argument here, O is given as false. Therefore, uh, some Gothic cathedrals are rich legacies is given as true. Well, this is a valid inference to make by the subalternate relation uh, in, in the, uh, the Aristotelian square of opposition or from the Aristotelian perspective. So both 25 and 26 are both valid. Some friendly gnomes are creatures that live below ground. Therefore, some creatures that live above ground are unfriendly gnomes. Some friendly gnomes are creatures that live below ground. That would be some SRP. Therefore, some creatures that live above ground are unfriendly gnomes. Well, notice here that there, these are two 
different propositions. They don't match in the sense of being A, E, I, or O. So if, if we're not matching there, then we need to go to the converse, obverse, or contrapositive relations to see if, if the, this is a valid inference to make. So saying some friendly gnomes are creatures that live below the ground, therefore some creatures that live above the ground are unfriendly gnomes. Notice we've shifted subject and predicate class. So if you think about the relations where you shift subject and predicate, it's either the converse or the contrapositive. In the converse, you just flip subject and predicate. In the contrapositive though, you flip it and change, um, change the subject and predicate classes to their class complements, which is the non-A's and the non-B's. Well, if we say creatures that live below ground are A, then creatures that live above ground or non-creatures that live below ground would be the complement class, class cl complement. If we say that A, uh, A here is some friendly gnomes, unfriendly gnomes would be non-friendly gnomes which would be the class complement to friendly gnomes. So what we've done is we flipped it and we've created the class complements. Okay, so we know that this is a contrapositive relation, a contrapositive inference. What are the uh, inferences that are uh, acceptable according to uh, the contrapositive? Our I statement, making an inference from an I to an O statement, or sorry, not I to O, I'm sorry. If you start with an I statement and you create the contrapositive, is the contrapositive logically equivalent to the original? The answer is no. So the contrapositive is equivalent to the original proposition in A and O statements. So in this case, this is an invalid inference and it's due to uh, illicit contraposition. So they did the contrapositive, but it's an invalid inference because um, those two statements are not logically equivalent. Okay, some gold watches are retirement gifts, therefore it is false that no gold watches are retirement gifts. Well, first of all, we see a very similar structure in the two sentences, right, in the two propositions. So we are dealing with a case with A, E, I, and O because the subject and predicate classes are the same. So some gold watches are retirement gifts. That's an I statement. That is um, some SRP. Therefore, it's false that no gold watches are retirement gifts. So when we say some gold watches are retirement gifts, we just assume that to be true, as if the person is saying it is true that this is the case. Therefore, it's false that no gold watches are retirement gifts. All right, so S is given as true. And the inference they're making in the conclusion is that E is, must be false. Is that an appropriate, logically valid inference to make? Yes. Remember, <clears throat> whether working from the modern perspective or the traditional viewpoint, the Aristotelian viewpoint, the contradictory relation always holds. So if S is given as true, E would be false. Uh, if E were given as true, I would be false. Uh, the same goes for A and O. They must always of necessity have the opposite truth values. Therefore, uh, this is a, a valid inference to make from the contradictory relation. Couple more. 29. It's false that all cowboys are romantic icons. Therefore, no cowboys are romantic icons. All right, so all cowboys are romantic, no cowboys are romantic. Again, same subject and predicate classes, so we know that we haven't used conversion, aversion, or contraposition. This, again, is using the traditional square of opposition. So it's false that all SRP. Let's check it out. It's false that all SRP, if A is false, thus, no cowboys, no SRP must be true. If it's false that all cowboys are romantic icons, then no romantic cowboys are romantic icons. So we're going from a false A statement given, what is the truth value of the corresponding E statement? It says that it's true. Is that an acceptable uh, logical inference to make? 
through the contrary relation. It is not. This is the illicit contrary. So the answer here is that it's invalid, it's illicit contrary. If A is given as true, we don't know of necessity the truth value of the E proposition. If E is given as true, or I'm sorry, uh, sorry, hold on one second. Let me start this again. False that all caps, sorry, false. If A is given as false, we don't know of necessity the truth value of the corresponding E proposition. If E is given as false, we don't know the truth value of the corresponding A. So here A is given as false, thus we can't make the inference that E must be true. Remember the contrary relation is one such that if A is given as true, E must be false. If E is given as true, A must be false. But falsity doesn't lead to truth uh, if you're starting with the false statement. All right, let's do one more. Um, skip 30. Uh, 30 was, uh, I think, valid again. So we've done enough valid ones. <clears throat> uh, 31, it's false that no sunsets are glorious scenes. Therefore, it's false that some sets, sunsets are not glorious scenes. So again, no sunsets are glorious scenes. Some sets, sunsets are not glorious scenes. So we're working again in the realm of categorical propositions that have the same subject and predicate classes. Thus, we are working within the realm of the traditional square of opposition. So first, it's false that no sunsets. It's false that E. It's false that E. Therefore, it must be false that some sunsets are not glorious scenes. So we're going from it's false that E. Therefore, it's false that, oh, some sunsets are not glorious scenes. So we're saying we're starting with a false statement and falsity flows down to the O statement. Is this an acceptable uh, <clears throat> logical inference to make in this argument? The answer is no. This is illicit subalternate. So this would be uh, invalid illicit subalternation. And remember, falsity does not flow down. Falsity flows up. So if O is given as false, corresponding E would be false. But if E is given as false, we don't know anything of necessity about the truth value of the corresponding O statement. And so this is illicit subalternation. Okay. So I took you through some examples here where we uh, are given arguments that make immediate inferences, both from uh, the viewpoint of the traditional square of opposition, as well as uh, the viewpoint of um, conversion, obversion, and contraposition. Um, and we had to determine the validity of the inferences. And then if they're not valid, we had to determine what forms of, of, of formal mistakes are made. Uh, and so I hope that you, uh, found this uh, video helpful.